Chris Sewell here, baseball card collector, investor, dealer in that order. Welcome everyone. This was a particularly fun video for me to make as I've always been intrigued by cards that feature the rookie card of at least two notable players. There have been a number of cards like that in recent years. Here's a 2018 Topps card featuring Ronald Acuna and Juan Soto. It's both of their rookie years. And here's a 2018 rookie year immaculate auto of Luka Doncic and Trey Young. But I wanted to see how many cards exist throughout history that feature the rookie card of two Hall of Famers, looking at baseball, basketball, and football. And I only wanted to look at true rookie cards, like true base cards that are official RCs by, by Beckett's old definition, you know, not like inserts or rare chase cards. But to my surprise, there were only two cards ever that fit the bill, two Hall of Famers on one card. So I decided to also include cards that have players who almost certainly will eventually make the Hall of Fame. And I'm not talking about like Soto and Doncic level, but players much farther along in their career who are basically lock Hall of Famers at this point. But that only added three more cards for a total of five. So I also found a pre-war card, which sort of counts as technically a pre-rookie of two Hall of Famers, if you want to go by def uh, Beckett's definition. So that's six in total, and uh, that's all there is. So we're going to count down those six, not by value, but by the quality of the uh, second best player on the card, if that makes sense. Like, which card has the most impressive second best player? But before we do that, here are a couple of uh, honorable mentions. The 1968 Topps Nolan Ryan card is one of the most iconic cards from the 1960s, but often overlooked is that also features Jerry Kuzman, who never sniffed the Hall of Fame, but he did win over 200 games. Uh, very, very solid career. So over 500 wins represented on this card. The 1972 Topps rookie of Hall of Famer Carlton Fisk also features Cecil Cooper, had a very solid career with the Brewers in the uh, 1970s and 80s. This 1981 Topps card features no Hall of Famers, but two very relevant players. Mike Sosha had a very solid career as a catcher and as a manager, and Fernando Valenzuela, very significant uh, pitcher for the Dodgers in the 1980s. The famous 1963 Topps Ken McMullen rookie also has Pete Rose, but amazingly this card features no Hall of Famers. And in basketball, Yao Ming shares his 2002 Fleer Tradition rookie with Amari Stoudemire. Uh, Yao Ming did make the Hall of Fame. Uh, Stoudemire did not, although he was a major star in the league for a number of years. All right, coming in at number six is a football card, and it's actually the only football card uh, ever to uh, fit the fit the bill. That's 2004 Fleer Tradition, card number 351. Features the rookie card of Eli Manning, Philip Rivers, and Ben Roethlisberger. This actually has three potential Hall of Famers. None of these guys are in the Hall of Fame yet, but that's because none of them are eligible yet. And interesting is all three very, very parallel, you know, similar parallel careers. So all three obviously started their careers in the same year. Basically played their entire career for one team. Uh, Rivers played one season with the Colts at the end, but other than that, all three played their entire career with one team. All three fairly recently retired. And uh, all three ended up in the top 10 all-time in both passing yards and passing touchdowns. Really interesting that all three rookies here appear on one card. Now, I wouldn't say all three of these are like a lock to get in, but I would sort of I would sort of predict all three will. Uh, but yeah, it could end up being only two of them or you know, maybe even only one of them. I'm going to say Ben Roethlisberger is a top player on this card and Eli Manning is number two for the purpose of the ranking of this video. But that's certainly uh, certainly debatable. Now, these players do share some other cards in 2004, but it's all, you know, dual auto, rare insert stuff uh, for the most part. This is the only base card that at least two of them shares, 2004 Fleer Tradition. And uh, it comes in a number of parallels. There's like a blue parallel, like I think there's a green parallel, a crystal parallel, but this is the uh, the, the one true base card. And the card's value, I mean, you know, not so expensive. You can get a, a PSA 8 for $37. You can pick the card raw for just 30 bucks, And uh, if you want to, you know... Go all out, get yourself a PSA 10 copy of this. Uh, it's about $200. All right, now number five, which is the the card I think about when I think of cards with multiple Hall of Fame rookies on it, and that's 1978 Topps Baseball at number 707. This card features the rookie cards of Hall of Famers Paul Molitor and Alan Trammell, and we're going to call Alan Trammell our number two player on the card. Paul Molitor made uh, the Hall of Fame in his first year of eligibility. It took Trammell about 15 years or so to eventually get uh, elected in. And Topps did this basically every year from the 1960s, 1970s, and even into the early 1980s where they just put multiple rookies on, on one card. And they did this, you know, with a bunch of rookies every every year. So I'm actually kind of surprised that this is the only card, uh, baseball card from the 60s, 70s era to land two Hall of Fame rookies on the, on the same card. And 1978 Topps is not a rare set, but it does get tough to get in a higher grade. Look at that exponential scale as you go up in a grade. It's about a $35 card in a PSA 6. Uh, double that for a seven, triple that for an eight, you know, eight uh, x that for a nine, and then you're looking at sixty six thousand dollars was the last sale of a PSA ten. If you want like a really really solid near mint copy, uh, raw probably probably costs you around fifty dollars, but you can actually get like solid mid grade copies raw for ten twenty dollars something like that. 
All right, number four is the one we're sort of cheating on a little bit, and that is because both of these players, this is considered their XRC to mean the extended rookie card by Beckett's definition. That's because it's a pre-war card, sort of an oddball set, and that's 1941 double play. Johnny Mize and Eno Slaughter, both of these are Hall of Famers, and according to Beckett, both of their official rookie cards are in the 1948 Bowman set, but this is a 1941 card, again, sort of an oddball card, but we're getting a little technical here. We're going to call Eno Slaughter the number two player on this card. Is uh, Looking over both of their stats, I think Johnny Mize had the more uh, more impressive career numbers at least. Looking over the value of this card, very, very rare card. It's not a card that gets put up for sale very often. Most of this, uh, the numbers you see there are just sort of like the, that was the last uh, you know known sale of the card in that grade, and that happened a year or two ago or something like that. Just not a lot of data to go off of, so those numbers are pretty estimated. There's never been a, uh, a sale of a PSA 9 or a 10. In history, so that would be interesting to see what one of those would would fetch. Number three is a basketball card, and like the uh, football card we saw earlier. It features three future Hall of Famers or likely future Hall of Famers. 2003 Fleer Tradition card number 300 got the rookie cards of LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony, and Dwayne Wade. All three of these players are no no doubt about it. Future Hall of Famers for basketball. The Basketball Hall of Fame is the easiest Hall of Fame of the three to get into, and there's there's no question all three of these will eventually get in. Uh, this card comes in a number of parallels, but this year you're looking at is the base card. We're going to call Dwayne Wade the number two player on this card after, obviously, uh, LeBron James. These three also share a rookie in the 2003 Topps Matrix set, and this set ha features combinations of lot lots of different combinations of players. So there's a bunch of examples where two of them are on a card with a, a random third player, but uh, there here, here's the three players from the Fleer Tradition card and their Topps Matrix rookie. There's also a really interesting one in this set featuring... Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, and Chris Bosh. Those are all three rookie cards, and those are the three players that uh, led the Miami, that were all teammates with the Miami Heat when they won their, their two championships. The Fleer Tradition rookie, pretty big money card, multiple three figures, uh, raw or even in a PSA 7, and PSA 10s approaching two grand. Number two, back to baseball, and we're looking at a 2001 Topps traded card number 99. Ichiro and Albert Pujols. This one's sort of cheating a little bit as both of these players appear in the set uh, on as their own. So under Beckett's definition, you know, this might not be an official RC, but we're going to count it since it is a base card and is the rookie year card of both of these players. And uh, both of these players are absolute no-brainer uh, no first ballot Hall of Famers. They're not eligible yet, so not in yet, but they will be in shortly. Uh, we're going to call Ichiro, I guess, number two here. I mean, you could probably argue either way, but We'll go with Albert Pujols, number one, Ichiro, number two. This card comes in a number of parallels, including Topps Gold. There's also a Topps Chrome version, same card, but in the Topps Chrome set, and that comes with a Refractor, which is a uh, big money card. But the Topps Traded Base is uh, not cheap in its own right, going for around $100 for like a nice, you know, raw near mint copy, and PSA 10 is going over uh, for over $3,000. And that brings us to number one, Back to Basketball. And this should be uh, no surprise. 1980 Topps Basketball, Larry Bird and Magic Johnson rookies. You also get Dr. J, Julius Serving in the middle there, although it's not Julius Serving's rookie. It is Larry Bird's rookie and Magic Johnson's rookie. And they are both, obviously, uh, Hall of Famers and all-time greats. This is one of the most iconic, uh, not just basketball, but sports cards of all time. And, uh, I mean, you can you can pick who you want to rank number one, two. I'm going to go Magic Johnson, one, Larry Bird, two. But I think that's essentially interchangeable. Big money card, of course, and really, really hard to come up with like a raw value because uh, it's so condition sensitive. But you can see PSA 2s, uh, even PSA 2s, low grade sell for 300 plus dollars. And when you get into PSA 10s, which is just a pop 20, uh, the card goes for over a half million dollars. And just want to get everyone's opinion on this. You know, it was really tough to come up with the ranking here for the best second, you know, player. If you watch the channel, you know, I'm a big fan of lists and ranking things. I think it's really fun and Leads to a lot of interesting debates, but this one was tricky. I mean, across multiple sports and multiple eras, like, you know, all-time greatness or relevance, you know, hard to sort of come up with. Well, here, here's the list I came up with, it, ranking these six players. What do you think of this list? Do you think the order's correct, or do you think anything? You know, you could, you could, you know, bump Eli Manning up a little bit or or whatever you think would, uh, would, would make the list more accurate. But Or also, you know, on the individual card, were any of the individual cards wrong? Like, well, you know, uh, Magic Johnson won, Larry Bird two, that should have been switched, or maybe... Philip Rivers should have been number two or, or whatever. Curious to hear everyone's uh, thoughts on that. But that's it. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Eat your vegetables. May the force be with you. Be good to your neighbors. Tip your servers well. Look both ways before crossing the street. Don't uh, pee into the wind. What else we got? Anyway, thanks, everyone.